perspective, uh, Dolby Sound for what it's worth, uh, 32 gigabytes. I think there's a smaller one, but the 32 gigabytes unlocked version was 200 bucks, and that's the one I got. So this slides off. Of course, you got the Amazon logo. There's some specs on the bottom, barcodes really. Can't really. My camera's being an asshole, but so let's get this thing open. It pops open like so. Get the phone out. So you've got the phone. Talk about that in a second. You've got some kind of informational stuff. Um, feels good. It's on cardboard, I guess. I'm not really sure what this cutout is about right here. Not sure what's up with that, but it talks about. Oh, that's what it was for. It's the little pin to get the SD card out. It's a nano SD card, or not SD card. It's a nano SIM card, like the, the one the iPhone uses. So there's that. Um, getting to know your Fire Phone, um, and then the one in Spanish. So this is the USB cable. Of course, it's micro USB. It's not a proprietary one like the iPhone. It's shockingly long, which is really cool. A lot of the ones that come with the phones I've had are super short, and they're pretty much useless. So let's toss that over here. So you have a little charger piece, plug into the wall. It's compact, it's pretty nice. And then you've got the headphones, which actually I'm not terribly impressed with. I had to call T-Mobile and get my number ported because I was on boost. And uh, the sound quality actually kind of sucks. You're definitely not going to be listening to music with this. But as far as just talking to people, I'm sure that it's fine. Uh, they're magnetized, which is, you know, what it's worth, that's cool. Um, you can control your music with this. You can turn it up, you can pause it, you can turn it down. But like I said, the sound quality is kind of crappy, so I don't know how much music you're going to be doing listening to with that. So I think that that is it. Here's a little pin to get the um, SIM card out. So, I mean, it's a nice box. It's, it's definitely not bad. It's sturdy. It feels good. It feels like it's quality, you know. So let's toss this over to the side here. Now let's talk about the phone. So this isn't going to be a real in-depth review. I'm going to write a review on my blog about it. I'll eventually root it. I've already read on how to do that. It's possible. You can, of course, sideload it with Android APKs, applications for what it's worth. One of the biggest complaints that people have with this phone is that it doesn't support very many Android applications. And that may have been true when it was released, but it is certainly not true now. I didn't have really any problem at all finding my favorite Android app. So. Before we get going, it's it's glass on both sides, which is actually pretty common. I think the, the iPhone might have been the first, one of the original iPhones might have been one of the first uh, phones with that. I think the recent Nexus has, has that. I mean, it feels really good. It's super sturdy. doesn't make any noise, which is nice. Um, dynamic perspective gives you four cameras that kind of track where your face is or where your head is, so you can't take pictures with them or anything. But there is a front camera right there, and then there's an 8 megapixel camera with a flash in the back. So um, you've got your power button up top, you've got your volume rockers here, and then this is a camera plus a firefly button. This positioning is very strange because if you want to take a picture with it, you got to reach over here, but then the camera is right here. So if you're reaching over, you're inevitably going to put your finger in front of the camera. So this button positioning is terrible. It should be down here so that when the camera is on the bottom down here, you're like this and you're not, it, it's just, it's a terrible placement. It's not that good. But as far as Firefly is concerned, pushing that button will bring up Firefly and that's pretty cool. So you got your speaker up here. And, um, there's a single button, very similar to LG kind of does this, but there's the, a lot of LG devices. There's also the two um, soft buttons here. There's no soft buttons on the Fire OS and I'll talk about how I feel about that in a second. So let's go ahead and turn this puppy on. So one of the super awesome things that I really appreciate about the Fire OS is this lock screen. And since it's dynamic perspective, you can rotate the phone and it'll like kind of rotate the scene. And there's probably 20 different scenes that you can use. I really like uh, World War One, World War II Aviation. So this is the one I chose, but this is really cool. So it shows the, the time and the date and everything. So swipe up and this is Fire OS. So it's based on I have it on airplane, airplane mode so I don't get text to interrupt the review or anything. This is Fire OS, so it's based on Android, whatever the latest Android is. I think this might actually be based on Lollipop. Now they've, they've released a, um, a new update uh, fairly recently, I think in the beginning of December, I want to say. But uh, if you, it's, it's all gesture based, which is really, really odd. It takes some time getting used to, but it's actually pretty cool. 
So swiping down will bring down the little status thing like so, and then swiping up will make it go away. Swiping left will bring, actually if you rock left it might be easier, will bring this um, kind of context menu. It's, it's context sensitive based on which app you have open. If you have nothing open, it'll bring up this. If you tilt it sideways to the right, it'll show your um, weather and some other notifications in here, which is cool. And then if you swipe up, you'll get your applications, which is exactly like the Android app drawer, so it's, there's nothing special there. What is very unique about the um, Fire OS is that you have this carousel, which is kind of exactly what you would expect, right? You have, when you're on the Silk browser, you've got your recently visited uh, web pages and on your phone, I have your calls. I didn't find any problems with locating apps for the phone. Uh, well, I can't do that, I'm on uh, airplane mode. But yeah, a lot of people said that they weren't able to find apps. I didn't find that to be uh, necessarily true at all. Um, that may have been the case early on, but uh, it's certainly not the case now. So it's also apparently really easy to uh, port apps to the device. So if your favorite developer hasn't ported a game or an app to the device, you could probably just ask them and they could do it. If it's open source, I guess you could do it yourself. But with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and um, close this off. If you're interested in perhaps a more in-depth uh, review talking about the hardware specs and stuff like that, you can visit my blog at uh, briansprojects.net. There'll be a review on there. There'll also be an article on there eventually talking about how to root this thing and how to install Google Apps. So, um, sorry about the the this terrible camera not focusing on the poor phone. It's hope this uh, video ends up looking okay. So it's not looking so good from the the viewport. So that is it. So thanks for watching. And um, if you're interested in a phone that is uh, super awesome quality, um, really plugged into Amazon services, get a year of Prime free, which is awesome. And uh, it's similar to Android, but yet a little bit different. The Fire Phone, Amazon Fire Phone, is definitely, definitely a device to check out. So, yeah, thanks for watching.